now let's come to a question which interests all psychiatry and interests all of us. What is the difference between a normal and an abnormal person? The difference is this. A normal person always works toward a goal or a purpose. The abnormal person looks for escape mechanisms, excuses, rationalizations in order to avoid discovering the meaning and purpose of life. That is the difference. The normal person sets for himself a target. For example, in this life, a young man might want to be a doctor or a lawyer. But beyond that, there's something else. Suppose you ask, what do you want to do after you become a doctor? Well, I want to marry, and then raise children, and then be happy, and then make money, give money to my children, and then... There comes the last, and then. The normal person knows what that and then is. The abnormal person, however, is locked up within the barrel of his own ego. He's like an egg. He's never been hatched. He refuses to submit himself to a certain amount of divine incubation in order to arrive at a different life than he has. Now, what are some of the escapes of the abnormal person? Because that's the way he spends his time. If he wants to go, for example, from New York to Washington, He isn't concerned about Washington. He's concerned about giving excuses why he doesn't go to Washington. Now, just to mention a few of these escape mechanisms of the abnormal person. One, love of speed. I believe that an excessive love of speed, or should I say, a love of excessive speed is due to a want of a goal or purpose in life. So they do not know where they're going, but they certainly are on their way. And there may even be an unconscious or half-conscious desire to end life. Because it is without purpose. Another escape would be uh, sex, throwing oneself into business in an abnormal kind of way in order to have the intensity of an experience atone for a want of goal or purpose. One of the very famous psychiatrists, Dr. Young, said that after 25 years of experience of dealing with mental patients, I would say that at least one third of my patients had no observable clinical neurosis. But all of them were suffering from a want of the meaning and purpose of life. And not until they discover that will they ever be happy. In other words, the vast majority of people today are suffering from what might be called an existential neurosis. 
the anxiety and the problem of living. The answering of the question, what is it all about? Where do I go from here?